Chapter 13 video. We are continuing with financial statement frauds. We've already talked about revenue and expense frauds. And now we're going to talk about liability, asset, and disclosure frauds. So the bottom line of financial statement fraud is they're trying to change their bottom line, right? They want net income to look bigger than it does. So we've talked about how they can um, uh, miss with revenues, right? Revenue fraud, they'll inflate revenues different ways. We talked about how they can decrease expenses, typically by decreasing cost of goods sold by inflating asset in, in the asset inventory, right? Um, so we talked about that. And so higher revenues or lower expenses <clears throat> can make net income look bigger, all right? And they are still doing that. Um, by messing with um, liabilities, assets, and just not disclosing stuff. So, so some frauds aren't net income related. Sometimes they just want to say they have more assets than they do for some reason. But we're we'll, going to talk first about liability fraud. So you want to understate your liabilities, typically. You want to say you have fewer liabilities than you do, right? Because liabilities you have to pay. <clears throat> but liability accounts, um, especially contingencies, things like warranty reserves, um, allowances for bad debt, things like that, um, can be used to um, create bigger liabilities. And then in future periods, it's like, oh, we didn't use all that warranty reserve. And then they release it uh, uh, take less expense in the next period and it looks like they have bigger net income because they want their net incomes to be kind of smooth and if they have a, a if they have a period where they're gonna have like a really big net income they'll stick some of that in reserves and use it for the next period when they know they won't have as big or alternately they know they're gonna have a loss there's just no way to avoid a loss so they take a big bath they call it and take even more of a loss and then they stick stuff in reserves. And when you've got that stuff in a liability account, and then you can say, oh, we, we didn't use this. And, and you take it out of there, and it, it's making your net income bigger. So that's a thing they do, is with reserves. And take a big reserve now, release it in a future period. Uh, they try to meet that uh, earnings expectations. Um, so... Um, what do you do to identify liability fraud? Um, well, there's uh, certain kinds of accounts they use, right? There's typical ways they do this. And this next chart shows various ways that they do this kind of fraud. Now, um, again, the main thing with liabilities is if they're not using it to create a fake reserve account or an inflated reserve account, maybe, I mean, it wouldn't be a fake account, you need warranty reserve, but inflate it, um, would be to understate your liabilities. It's, um, you just, you want your, your liabilities to look less, right? Because investors would look at that financial statement and say, oh, look at all this debt. Uh, they're not going to be able to cover this debt. So you want that to look less. So how can you do that? And of course, these are the main things that happen. You purchase inventory, you accrue liabilities like payroll expenses, you sell things, you sell services, um, and you borrow money, and you incur contingent liabilities. So when you're doing these transactions, that involves some accounts. And some of these accounts are liability accounts, right? So when you purchase inventory, you're going to have an account payable right so you would like to understate that right so you do things like don't record purchases um, right and various different things when you when you incur um, accrued liabilities just don't accrue them <laughs> right um, sell products you might have unearned revenue that like you think oh how would selling products get a liability well unearned revenue account if somebody pays you in advance that's not revenue, but they'll want to say it's revenue. And that would understate the liability unearned revenue. And so on and so forth. So we got 
most of these transactions involve understating the liability. Um, so that's the main thing. And keeping in mind that these reserve accounts, these warranties, um, are sometimes used to um, uh, inflate the reserves. <clears throat> so let's talk about accounts payable. Um, how would you, what would you do there? Well, just don't record a purchase or wait till after the year end, right? I mean, it's easy to mess with cutoff dates. Um, if the invoice doesn't come, if you don't pay the invoice till after the first year, somebody has to actually go get that invoice and look at it and see when you actually incurred the, right? You incur the liability when you receive the, the property, right? So whether or not you've been billed for it, right? So, um, you know, it, it can, they can um, overstate purchase returns. They can say, oh, we bought something, but we returned it. So take that off of the liabilities. Um, when purchases are understated, net income's overstated. That's what they're getting at, right? So if per, right, beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. So if you can understate cost of goods sold, you can overstate your net income because it's an expense. <clears throat> so accruals, uh, salaries payable, taxes payable, um, interest payable, things you know you're going to have every month, utilities payable, just typical things that you know come up but you don't maybe get a bill for or the bill comes at a strange time, taxes payable comes away, uh, is weird. You, they don't really get a bill for income tax. Um, you might get a bill for property tax, but it comes like in October or something weird. Uh, so, <clears throat> just don't write them down. Just don't accrue them. Um, so, when you don't accrue that liability, right? You're understanding your liability. You're not accruing the expense that goes with it, right? Salary expense, wage expense, um, tax expense. So, there you go. The other side of that accrual is an expense. So now you've understated expenses, and what does that do to net income? Raise net income. Unearned revenue. Well, somebody comes in and gives you cash. Why wouldn't you put that down as revenue? Well, you can't if you haven't earned it, right? Part of the gap says that in order for revenue to be recognized, it has to be earned, which means you provided the good or service. So when someone paid cash up front, you need to have a liability. You owe work, right? But if you stick it down as just go revenue, it's great. You understate liabilities and you overstate revenues, which overstates net income. <clears throat> so future liabilities. Um, things like warranties, um, uh, any kind of other expense that might come up, um, some service you sold in advance. Um, <clears throat> so those things are recognized um, in the period the automobile sold. So it's easy to understate it and not record it. Um, various types of debts. Um, again, the main thing you want to do um, if you're committing liabilities fraud is you want to understate those liabilities. Um, if you understate liabilities frequently, you're understating an associated an expense as well. Um, so, um, notes, mortgages, these are one-time deals. Just leave it off. Right? Don't report it. <clears throat> Don't record it. Call it something else. Say it's been forgiven and write it off. Um, say it doesn't go with this company. Um, contingent liabilities. So, um, a contingent liability is something you may have to pay, particularly thinking here of lawsuits. If you, if you are being sued, your liability is contingent upon the outcome of that lawsuit, right? And 
you have to um, put that depending on how likely you are you know this is again our accounting rules I don't expect you to know the accounting rules but you have to put that somewhere if you have a contingent liability and it depends on how likely you are to lose and how much it's going to be and you can either put it in the footnotes or as a as a liability it just depends on where the suit is and how likely you are to lose it so they just don't do that right because how would auditors know you're being sued they'd have to go and find the documents with the lawyers and all that stuff so some, a lot of times they just leave it off all right so we've talked about the different ways that you can commit liability not you you wouldn't do that but your clients can commit liability frauds typically trying to increase net income or just reduce the liabilities right you want your liabilities to look low you want to understate the liabilities so that must leave some symptoms right so on our next video we're going to talk about things you can look for that show people as you do your fraud investigation they're committing liability fraud.